Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I would love for you to click that, click that subscribe button down below. Uh, if you are not, welcome back. So today's video, as you can see from the title, is going to be a little luxury makeup um, kind of get ready with me. Most of this is new and most of this I have not used before. Uh, so you're going to come along with me on this journey and get ready with me. So let's get into it. So for primer, I am going to start off with this um, YSL Touche Clot Blur Primer. This is like super fancy. I definitely did not buy the full size, but I did get like a little mini um, tester. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's got like little gold flecks in it. It's super fancy. So I'm excited to try this out. I've heard, um, I guess mixed reviews about this. Ooh, it looks like, I don't know, it's like, silicone-y almost. You can just like barely see it there, but let's give it a go. So this feels very, very silicone-y. So if you've ever tried like the Benefit uh, Pour Professional, I believe is what, is what it's called. That's what this feels like. It's super slippery. I probably put way too much on, but I don't know if I like the way this feels. It's very like, not necessarily oily, but like slippery almost. I don't know. So I'm going to let it sink in for a little while and see if it kind of dries down at all or soaks into the skin uh, before applying the foundation. The full size is one fluid ounce and it retails for $52, which is a real expensive. It has sunken into the skin, so it's not it's not like slippery anymore, so it did soak into the skin um, and kind of dry down. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the foundation now. So for foundation, I am super excited about this because I picked up the um, Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. Now, I've never tried a stick foundation before, so this is my first time ever using a stick foundation. and. I'm kind of nervous, but I've heard such good things about it. Um, and the lady at the hourglass counter at uh, Nordstrom talked me into getting this uh, foundation brush because I mentioned that I wanted like, I, I usually do like light to medium coverage, uh, very rarely full coverage. So instead of getting the normal like small brush that you typically see, um, which is $46, uh, she mentioned that this will give me a little bit of lighter coverage because it's not as densely packed as the other one or as flat. Uh, and this thing was 50, I think it was like $58, which is insane. $58, which is more than the foundation. So the foundation is $46. I, I didn't even realize that this was more expensive. I guess I should have known considering it's a larger brush, but... $48. She rang me up and I was like, mm, okay. But it's it's really soft and I like it. I just don't know that I would have would have paid $58 for it if I was able to see the price tag up front. But Nordstrom knows what they're doing by not putting prices on things. So if I did I didn't ask, so I guess it's my fault. But anyways, on to the uh, foundation. And I have this in the shade golden. I'm hoping this is a good shade match. She just kind of matched me, so I don't know. Okay, here I go, I'm so excited. So I guess I'll just do a, f oh, that looks real dark, y'all. Okay, well, I'm hoping this blends into the skin. I don't really know how much to put, so I'm just gonna put a couple stripes here and there and hope for the best. I almost feel like this brush is too flimsy like I don't know like it's not really moving the product around like it should but you know, like the bristles are just too long and too soft to really move the product around so like you can I don't know if you guys can still see I still have like stripes all over my face I don't know if I like this brush $58 is a lot of money so that's one layer down, and I don't really see any coverage. Like, 
maybe like super light coverage because you can still see I have like all of my acne scars. It didn't really cover anything up. Um, so I'm gonna add another layer and just hope that this brush kind of blends it in a little bit better. So I'm gonna go in with another layer. All right, so that's it all blended out. I, I don't know, I think I got it to like maybe light to medium coverage, but I might have to spot conceal because I just don't really feel like that did much. I'm not a fan of this brush. These bristles are just super flimsy and it just, it took a really long time to kind of move the product around and spread it out. So I still feel like I have like stripes. Um, I don't think you'll be able to see it on camera, but I just, I think I'm gonna have to try, the next time I use this foundation, I'm gonna have to try and apply it with um, a different brush, maybe something more dense and kind of not as flimsy, I guess. I don't know, not a fan of the brush. And for $58, I wish I could get my money back, but I don't think I can. <laughs> so moving on to concealer, um, I didn't pick up a concealer, but I do already have the Giorgio Armani um, Power Fabric Concealer in the shade 4.5. Conceal those nice, large, dark circles that I have. And to blend this out, I'm just gonna use my Sonia Kashuk sponge. All right, and then to set my face, I am going to be using the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. Whew, that was a mouthful. Um, retails for $46, and you are getting uh, 10 and a half grams or 36 ounces of product. Man, this stuff is not cheap. Guess that's why they call it luxury, right? <laughs> I just realized I have this Charlotte Tilbury contour wand to contour. I don't know if I want to say screw it and put it on on top of powder or if I just want to forget it because I've already set my face and I don't know how this does over powder. Do I dare try it? I think I'm going to give it a go and just hope for the best. This could be real, real bad. <laughs> All right, so this bad boy is um, $38, and you're not getting a whole lot of product. You're getting 0.4 fluid ounces. All right, wish me luck. I'm going in. And let me just say that I never, ever contour. So not only am I doing this on top of powder, I... I don't usually ever do this, so just hoping for the best here. I'm hoping this blends out nice and easy. Oh, not, not too bad. It doesn't seem to be picking up any of the product underneath, but and it seems to not set for a while, so you have some time to kind of blend it all out. Just gonna take the excess of that onto the nose. Do I know what I'm doing? Absolutely not. Never ever contour the nose, so. Just a bunch of firsts today. But if you guys are wondering if it works over powder, I would say that it does. It didn't lift up didn't lift up any of the foundation that I had underneath, at least not from what I can see. All right, and then for bronzer, I'm going to go in with this YSL Limited Edition. Um, this is like their spring 2019 collection. I wanna say that this is still available, uh, but I couldn't find it online, so I'm not really sure what the price is. I don't have the receipt for it, unfortunately. So I'll try and link it down below if I can still find it, but I got this at Nordstrom, like I said earlier. Um, but I'm gonna use this to bronze up the skin, and I have this in the darker of the two shades because they came out with two, and this is in the shade Jarno. Probably pronouncing it wrong, but anyway, it's the darker of the two shades. All 
That definitely warmed up the skin. I feel like this is a lot warmer in comparison to the contour shade from Charlotte Tilbury. So I like it. It doesn't look bad. Um, like I said, I never really contour. So this is a lot going on for me. So I'm just going to run over it again with that powder brush that I used. And then moving on to blush. So for blush, I love blush. Um, and I went a little overboard. So I got um, one from Chanel. And this uh, is limited edition. This is the shade 140 in Tweed Beige. And I just love Chanel packaging. And then the packaging. And this shade is stunning. I love this. It's so pretty. And I don't know that this is available anymore either. I picked up the last one at my Nordstrom that they had in store. So this is option one. And then if any of you guys follow um, Michelle Wong, every time I watch one of her videos, I'm like, mm, that's beautiful, I need that. But um, like I said, I'm not really into luxury. I just kind of dabble. But um, this brand is sold um, at like any high-end department store. And it's the Chantakai brand. Chantakai is a wonderful brand. So I definitely don't mind giving them my coin. But this blush is so pretty. So this is the packaging. And I'm obsessed with elephants. And they had an elephant-themed blush. And it's called Smitten. And look at this. It is beautiful. So it does have a little bit of an overspray on that elephant there. So there's a little bit of glitter, but once you use that up a few times, it'll go away. But isn't that gorgeous? So beautiful. Now it is a little tiny. Um, then option three, I will probably use this as kind of like a blush bronzer topper, but I purchased the Laura Mercier Summer Block um, in Peach Mosaic. And it's got like, you could use this as like a bronzer topper, then you've got blushes on the sides here and then a highlighter down at the bottom. So we're just gonna kind of play with this. I think I might use this all over the face and as a highlighter. Um, so between the two blushes, I don't know. I guess we'll do both and see. I'll do one on one side and one on the other, but this is them side by side. Completely different. So let's just play around. So I'm going to go into the Chanel one first. It's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but I love that. It's like a kind of more darker neutral just because it does have some like brown in there and a little bit of gold in there. I don't know if the gold is just like an overspray or what, but it is beautiful. I like that it kind of gives a little sheen to the skin. And then I'm going to go in with the Chantakai one on this side. Oh yeah, so I just dunk my brush in there and all of the glitter is gone. Oh, that makes me so sad. Well, it was beautiful while it lasted. So you can tell this is much pinkier. So you have the Chanel, which is kind of darker with a little bit of a sheen, and then pinky with a sheen. I don't know which one I like better. They're both completely different blushes. Both have bits of a sheen to it. This one's just slightly darker, and this is more pinky. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Chantecaille on top of this side, just to kind of pinken it up a little bit and then go in with the Chanel on the other side. Even it out. And then I'm gonna take what's left on the nose, give me that nice sun-kissed look. Ooh, I think I might have gone a little heavy-handed there, but that's okay. I am loving this so far. So for highlight, I am going to go into that Laura Mercier Pink Mosaic, or Peach Mosaic, sorry, Peach Mosaic. And I think I'm going to mix this color down here, the bottom color, and then mm, I'm gonna mix this one and this one here and use that as a highlighter. Ooh, that is really icy. I don't know if I like how icy that is. I'm going to go in with this kind of pink color here and see if I can't take that down a notch. 
Yeah, that white's a little too icy for me, but beautiful. All right. It's my first ever Laura Mercier product, so. Happy with the purchase. This is nice. And it's really good for multi, for um, multitasking because you can use it as a uh, blush topper, bronzer topper, and then obviously highlight, which is what I'm using it for here. Check that out. I think I'm gonna take my bronzer brush and try and dip just mostly into this top color here and use that as kind of a bronzer topper. See how this goes. As if I wasn't already glowy enough, you know? Can I ever have too much glow? Moving on to the eyes, I have the Chanel, ooh, I am totally going to butcher this, um, Le Beige's, Le Beige collection. Um, this is limited edition. I think I picked up probably one of the last ones at my um, Nordstrom, so if I can find it, I will link it down below. But, and I love, love, love this white packaging. First ever Chanel eyeshadows. Lots of firsts today. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that in this video, but a lot. Just know lots of firsts today. And this is ta -da! I waited until filming this video to actually open any of this. So I'm so excited. I have, I bought this a while back, so I have been dying to play in it. In there, but isn't it gorgeous? I love that. Who doesn't love just a neutral palette? Okay, so there's no shade name, so I'm just going to point. So for starters, I think I'm going to take this shade here and use that as my transition shade. It's a little bit dark. Ooh, there's quite a bit of kick up in the pan too. I don't know if you guys can see that, but quite a bit of kick up, but it is so pigmented. Look at that. Look at it. So I'm going to go very light handed with this and just kind of throw this into the crease. And I'm going to put this in the outer V as well. Brought you guys in a little closer so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Not that this is like a super in-depth eye look or anything. I'm just going to keep it real, real easy because I have, like I said, I think I have a pinky, pinky lip color today. I'm just switching to a big fluffy brush. This has no additional product on it. I think I'm gonna take that big fluffy brush and go into this kind of, this kind of like shimmery pink color. I'm gonna try and take that just along the outside and like underneath the brow bone. And then to deepen up the outer corner, I'm going to take this top shade here and kind of put that into the, um, just, just right here in this area. Now this has some shimmer in it, so we're going to see how much of that kind of gets laid onto the eye. And I'm using like a super small kind of detailer brush for this. I just want this just on the outer corner. And then for the lid shade, I'm going to go in this beautiful kind of champagne-y color there just all over the lid. I'm going to take this on a, I'm going to take it on my finger and just put it right on the inner corner. Oh, that's so pretty. I just like barely touched into the pan. I'm sure if you wanted it more opaque than this, you could wet a brush, but I love this kind of like sheer layer and just tapping that over the last shade we put down. So freaking pretty. And then I'm just taking that original brush and just kind of feathering over the edges, make sure that it's all nice and blended and that there's no sharp lines. All right, and then for the lower lash, I'm gonna take that same brush that I use, that small detailer brush, and take that dark color just on the outer corners to kind of connect that, that eyelet. I'm 
And then the same color that we used for the brow bone, I'm going to use my pinky and just kind of put that into my inner corners. And then I don't have any new um, eyeliner. I didn't buy any because I wasn't even thinking about eyeliner, so I'm just going to use my NARS Via Veneto on the top and bottom inner rim. And I will be right back. And then for mascara, I got a little deluxe size of the Le Volume de Chanel Volumizing Mascara in the shade Noir, which I'm just assuming is like a black mascara. Whoa, look how big this wand is. It's like huge. Like, it's literally the size of the container. You guys, I really like this mascara. It made them like super long and volumizing. Now it is a little bit clumpy, but I don't really mind that. And I hardly ever put mascara on my bottom lashes because I have like three and they're like little scraggly things, but didn't doesn't look bad on my bottom lashes. All right, Chanel, it's a little bit of a weird wand like I showed you guys earlier, but got the job done. So moving on to lips, I have this um, lipstick from Chantecai. I love this packaging. I can say it time and time again. But like this is the, the little fold out that came with the lipstick. Oh, look at the cute little elephant. I am obsessed. But um, it, this is the Chantecai Lip Veil and it's, um, it says not only does this new ultra gliding insanely hydrating lipstick contain fair wild and organic certified baobab oil don't know what that is but it's baobab oil from zimbabwe and it is the first lipstick we've created exclusively to support a conservation project which i am all about and look how beautiful this packaging is like you have the little elephant as you turn it and then you have Shantakai here and this is in the shade Imp Impatience but this is the color here it's super bright I mean it looks a lot brighter on camera than it does in real life but it's nice and kind of sheer but this is definitely way more pinky than I like to go I am a nude gal Pink is not my color, but we're gonna give this a go. And then I do have um, a lip gloss from Chanel I wanna try out. This is definitely not my kind of color. Um, I like the formula. It's nice and light on the skin. Um, doesn't feel like you're wearing anything, but this is just not a color I would wear. I would probably use a darker lip liner or like a more nude lip liner to kind of take down that pinkness. Um, like I said, I did get a Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss in uh, number 119. Um, and it's like this kind of, again, it's a pink. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't wear pink. I was just felt rushed, I guess. Um, oh, it's not too pink. It's more of like a purpley pink. Um, that's it swatch there So I'm gonna just throw this on top and see what kind of color we come out with Definitely not a lip combo I would wear on a daily basis or ever um, But I do like the formula of both I'm excited to wear this uh, Rouge, Co Rouge Coco gloss with like a nude lip um, I wouldn't pair a lip with this look normally this lip with this look but it's what I had again I don't know what I was thinking picking those colors because they're not colors I would normally wear but anyway thank you guys so much for joining me on this luxury try on um, I love the way this look came out minus Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.